Hey guys, Steve here, Unbox Fresh, and in this video I'm reviewing the LG C7 2017 LG OLED TV. Um, I bought this for about 1500 from Amazon um, in January 2018. Time of recording is March 2018, so I've had it about two months. Um, before using this TV, I had, a L I had a Samsung 40 inch LED TV, which I had at the foot of my bed. I was, um, one of the uh, things I do is record Freeview. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about that, just using a, a USB powered hard drive on the back to record Freeview. So when I first got this, yep, I thought, oh my God, it's too big, because um, it's at pretty much at the foot of my bed. It's, there's about an extra two or three feet beyond my bed um, and it's actually sat now on a Sonus um, play base which is really really good very expensive um, I did have a, a, a pair a 10 pound 2.1 sound system which I got from the tip I'm gonna start off with the stuff I don't like the cons the, the things that maybe you that would stop you from buying this TV. Big issue is probably banding, or whatever it is. Um, when um, watching uh, uh, like grey, dark scenes, greyish scenes, where it's, I think it's like 5% or 2% grey, sometimes you can see lines on the TV. Now, about three weeks into buying, into using this TV, I noticed a white line straight down the middle of the TV, um, which bizarrely, the the day after um, it had disappeared, it wasn't there anymore. Um, and then about two weeks ago, so about two months later, I noticed it again and again, a, a day after, a day later it's gone. So I'm not really sure how that works. Um, there is like a, a thing where after four hours of watching the TV, it will, when you turn the TV off, it will do like a 15 minute sort of refresh, pixel refreshing thing. Um, so I guess maybe it just needs to align itself again, I, I don't know, but, but like I said, it, it disappears after like a day after, so it's sort of, and it's only, no, you only notice it like on, on mid-tones, I mean if I flip to YouTube, the inbuilt YouTube app here, which is playing something random, um, so you, you can see behind the thumbnails there's a grey, it's grayscale, so um, in the middle of that you, you can see a, a faint white line. You can't see it at the moment, it's not there. Um, there'll be a still image, I'm sure. So that's one way to check. Also, I have the Amazon app. I'll just press the Amazon button, which is on the remote here. The Amazon button's there, Netflix, Amazon. Um, so there we go, we go straight in. So you can notice it on here as well because the, the back of this is grey. So if I select something, you, you would notice it on that screen there, the loading screen. There's also another issue where, um, well, at the bottom of the screen, there's a slight yellow tint. So if I go back to YouTube, uh, you probably are not going to see this. Um, if I type in white background, so again, I'm using the remote here to type this in. White background, there we go. So I've got that on mute, uh, far right you see there's, there's always a mute icon, but on the bottom of the screen around here, there is a very slight yellow tint. I mean, actually, you only notice it really if you, if you look at it and then you look at the top, then you say, oh yes, it's, it, lo it looks um, a little bit yellowish. But most of the content, um, you, you're only going, really going to notice it maybe on like something like The Revenant or Game of Thrones where there's a lot of snow uh, but, and uh, anything black and white so Schindler's List is out you know you might notice it on Schindler's List um, but overall y you know 95% of the time I don't you know I, you just figured about it so again that's kind of a 
um, to me that's a minor issue um, so that's another reason not to buy it the other reason well there's a few well HDMI 1 um, it doesn't like 5.1 going into my Sonar sound system there's a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, this is HDMI 4 but I was using a PS4 Slim connected to HDMI 1 and I basically swapped it to HD, HDMI 4 um, because I was getting black image no signal detected quite often um, so I've changed it and I, yesterday I had no signal detected whilst playing Wipeout on the PS4 so um, there could be an issue with that sometimes as well when you're using the TV um, if you wiggle this remote you get this this cursor so that that can sometimes happen if it's on your lap or something so maybe you're watching a YouTube video and then you'll just have this appear and it can be a little bit annoying so you to get rid of it you press that and it gets rid of it but the problem with that is you end up when you press it you get another overlay here so if I flick to YouTube so you're watching a YouTube video this comes up you press the button this button here and then you end up with an overlay so you get more stuff and all, all you wanted you don't want that cursor thing on there there's no way of dis disabling this mouse pointer thing it's a feature um, which leads me on to the remote so I'm going to talk about the remote now so here we have the remote here you have a power on off button which uh, which changes which lights up which is quite cool um, set top box I'd never use one cool feature is you can hot link you can create shortcuts on these buttons so for example number one is HDMI 4 PS4 HDMI 2 that's HDMI 2 that's HDMI 3 4 is BBC one HD so I go straight into BBC one HD um, this is BBC news I mean, you can't actually probably see it there, but it's BBC News there. This one is something else, which I can't remember. That is Sky News, which I never use. Uh, seven is BBC iPlayer. Uh, number eight is a shortcut to my recordings for Freeview. So you can quickly go to recordings I'll talk about this uh, recording section later on. And number nine is YouTube. So you can go straight into YouTube, see it, and it just carries on. If you're playing a YouTube video and you go into preview, you go back to YouTube, it's, it's playing again. To choose what you want, if you press hold down zero, you can actually select which uh, which um, shortcut you want. Number six is, uh, looks like it's free for some reason. Um, so there we go, that's, that's, a, that's a good good thing uh, to go by on this remote. Next up we got mute, self-explanatory. One of the things uh, that annoys me with the remote is that when you press, you know, if you hear a noise in the house, you press mute, um, you don't hear the noise, then you press mute again, um, you carry on watching the TV with the sound on and then you hear another noise you press mute again and you get this um, message pop up about and um, so it has the serial number etc on it which is kind of annoying so if, basically if you press the mute button twice within a you know short period of time you get this error message pop up we got the voice unfortunately this voice command is, is pretty rubbish the rock Sorry, I couldn't understand your request. It, I, I've, you know, it knows. Uh, I, I never use the voice command. I don't know if someone out there might do. So on here we have the home button. This goes to your WebOS stuff, settings. You got this cogwheel thing here, which I find a little bit annoying, to be honest. Um, because basically, so you got up, down, left, right, and this is your select button, but it's also a jog button as well but it's also clickable there's no play so this is a disadvantage um, something which uh, makes this remote a bit crap to be honest um, there's no play pause stop record button fast forward rewind it's all done on this one button 
they're trying to be you know trendy cool you know someone with a beard a hipster guy so oh, oh my god guys let's just make it one button that does everything the problem with making one button that does everything of course is that this will wear out quite quickly and this remote i think is about 20 quid uh, a replacement is about 20 quid so the same as a skybox remote my samsung f7 uh, 40 inch tv the replacement remote is eight quid so that's uh, that's not great to be honest um you may consider using a Harmony remote, um, which you can pro program. This connects to like your Wi-Fi, and you can program it to um, control your TV, um, you know, sound bar, um, Android streaming box thing. But with this, of course, you've got play, pause, stop, record, rewind, fast forward. You got all your old favorites on there. Um, a logical remote, slim, um, also that brings me on to the next thing so this one is it's got a kind of a, a rubbery feel to it it's quite a you know an easy remote to can handle um, it's quite wide as well so it'll sort of stay where it is whereas with this one it's got like a, a base like that it's got like a, like a narrow thing so basically it kind of it, it wobbles so if you if you're eating KFC chicken and your only clean finger is your little finger when you try and change the, the, the thing you can only use this button and of course when you press it it goes like that and you can't press it so you have to sort of hold it and press it at the same time so it's a little bit annoying so it can be unstable on your lap it can roll around a bit basically um, already two months in the Netflix logo has faded as well. Um, this is your inputs, but I never use that. Amazon Hotlink. This, these are actually quite useful. Um, I actually use this rather than using my Shield TV to watch Netflix because it is just it's straight on the remote there, nice and easy. Don't use, don't use. Live view, don't use. So switching between apps is very, very easy. You just press one of these buttons. I'm going to now switch to Netflix. as you can see it's quite it's quite quick so I'm watching that so in a nutshell um, the image quality on this it's pretty much like having a hope a cinema screen at, at the well in, in my case at the foot of my bed. Um, here on the side there you've got settings so if I click the cog wheel you get the settings on the right you cannot customize these buttons here they're a bit, it's a bit annoying so picture mode I've set this so bright so this is kind of in a relatively you know an overcast day early evening um, I've got dark so that's if the lights are off um, and then to the, to the left I've got um, mega bright so that's if, if there's sunlight in the room um, and those those are really my free settings uh, vivid I don't use standard uh, cinema cinema um, mode is, is apparently the, the um, quite good for out-of-the-box stuff game mode I don't use um, I used to but it's uh, I've not really experienced any zero lag um, which brings me on to settings uh, adjusting your settings so you go to all settings here So what you can do is come down to here, adjust the OLED light. So this, um, just do it for you. So what you can do, one good thing about this remote is this cogwheel with this mouse cursor thing, you can actually drag it like that, which is quite useful, um, which is a, a plus point of the remote. What I do with the other settings, because I don't use game mode, is I turn off most of the extra stuff here, like tree motion and that. Um, it's actually off the game mode. I, I put it on to a, a mode I actually use, which is most of the time I just use bright one here. All settings. So again, you, you go into here, you press the OK button, you got your brightness and stuff here, uh, picture options, real cinema, 
Um, sometimes when I turn this stuff off, um, it's still, I go to a different input and it's still there, so it's a bit annoying. If, for example, I set this uh, Netflix to bright and then I f go to TV, um, it just remembers the last picture mode you were on the last time you used it. So if, I, if I'm on BBC One and it's on dark, and then I flick to Netflix, and the last time I used Netflix was bright, then Netflix will be bright, so I have to change it for each input. Mildly, well, not really annoying to be honest, but um, there we go. Uh, with program, so let's move on to Freeview. So I'm now gonna talk about free, using this as a Freeview recorder um, while just using it to watch TV. The big uh, big con with this TV is that it is a single tuner. I repeat, it is a single tuner. With my Samsung 40 inch TV, it was a twin tuner, which meant that I could record BBC One and watch BBC Two. With the LG, fit with the 1,500 pound TV here, um, you can only watch, you can record BBC One and you can watch BBC One but you can't, when you're recording BBC One, you can't watch BBC Two. Um, so it's it's a bit limited in that. I was, a li I was very surprised. I just assumed it would be dual tuner. But um, my usage has moved on now. I'm now Netflix. I've now got Netflix and Amazon there. So most of the stuff on BBC, etc., uh, ends up on one of those two buttons anyway. So, you know, I've decided to not be too bothered about that um so again look that this the, the cursor's popped up again it's a little bit annoying cool so we are now in freeview hd um the problem with this well with my samsung 40 inch tv what i could do was when i go to a standard definition channel like sky news with my 40 inch Samsung TV, which is, I think it was the F7000, so second to top from their top of the range TVs. With a standard definition channel, I could actually reduce the size so it was like a, like a postage stamp. So at the moment, this is a 55 inch TV. For, if this was a 28 inch TV at the foot of my bed, standard definition on Freebie would look okay, it would look fine. Um, not DVD quality, but it would still look pretty good. But because you can't do that with this TV, it's a digital zoom effect, so it blows up all the rubbish pixels. You know, the you know, Freeview SD is sub SD. It's not DVD quality. Standard definition on this on this TV looks rubbish, um, and a lot of people complain about that. But they don't realise that it's, you know, Freeview is designed. Freeview SD is designed to be watched on a 28 inch, 32 inch max TV. You've got something called live zoom here, which I've, I've pressed that. Um, I don't know what what zooms in apparently. I don't know. Well, that's that's really useful. I mean, who cares about that? You can't actually zoom out. So LG, if you are watching, if you could have a zoom out option. Um, so yeah, maybe if if there's a, if you could reduce the size of SD. You know, if there was an option just to reduce it so that it wouldn't look so blurry and rubbish, that'd be great. Cheers. So I've just pressed the back button on here to get out of live zoom. The guide button, unfortunately, it's a bit, um, it takes you out of the TV experience. So the sound pauses and then you have to wait like three seconds. So I don't know if you can hear that. So he's talking, I'm gonna press the guide button in three, two. And you get this thing come up again. So there you go, so you, you've got a, like a five second gap, um, which, you know, it's a mild annoyance, it's not a deal breaker to be honest. I'm gonna press mute again. So here's the EPG. So if you press page up, it goes up, it's, it's a little bit, you know, it's not super quick. It's not as good as the um, one that's on my Samsung TV. Um, this is Freeview Play, by the way, um, so that could be an issue. So here we go you've got this uh you know you can just go forward like that i mean it's it's relatively usable 
So if, for example, breakfast is, is on at the moment, if I click the out, outer three lines there, I can actually record it because I've got a USB powered hard drive in the back of my TV. So if I hit record there, waiting, sometimes it doesn't, uh, so you can serious link it, this episode only, so I'm going to choose this episode only. Sometimes it doesn't recognize, it says please put in a USB powered hard drive into your TV. Um, it needs warming up, I think. Sometimes it doesn't happen. If that happens, click it again and then hit record. So I'm going to stop recording. So if we look now, so I have to hold down the back button to actually get out of the guide. Another annoying thing is if you hit the back button, you don't get out of it. If you press the guide button again, nothing happens. Um, so now we're on breakfast. So let's try and change channels. You can't because it's a single tuner. Your £1,500 TV can only watch one channel at a time. So yeah, it's it's not great. So I'm just going to hit yes because that will stop recording. Recording has stopped as you see top right. And now I've changed to BBC2 HD. So... Going back to the standard definition thing, um, what I, what you can also do, so if I hit guide, uh, no, it's settings actually, so hit the cogwheel, and you go into all settings, and you go to programs, and you can go to um, program manager, um, I think that's the one for me. Edit all programs, edit favorites. So he, here what you can do is put all your HD channels into one list because obviously standard definition is unwatchable. So what this is what I've done. Um, you know, HD is normal, SD is, is just a joke. So this is my favorites, one BBC One HD. for you know all the HD channels together I've put sometimes I get um, interference of poor signal BBC News HD so I've put the uh, standard def version next door to it Sky News um, and then I put the standard def versions of the main channels here free sports I mean occasionally I might watch that uh, BT sports showcase and that's it that's that's essentially all I watch I don't watch any other channels because the picture quality is so poor especially when you can't um, scale down the image on this TV so overall this is this is quite a straightforward thing to do you can reorganize these channels so you can put um, you know channel 5 uh, I don't know you could put BT you could swap these around so I'm gonna swap these around so if you see top right there's a yellow green red button so these correspond to of course your your colored buttons here so I'm gonna press the green button and that means you can reorder the channel, I think. So if I press, I've selected it, I'm going to press green. Uh, ah, so select two and it swaps them around. So that, that's, that's what I've done there. So that was uh, live as it happens. Pretty exciting. So I'm now going to hit the back button on the remote. That gets out of it. So if I go back to the guide, I'll just show you how to get out. So I'm on, you're on the guide. Oh, this thing pops up as well. So when you're in the EPG, the only way to, so if you press the back button, you end up with your web OS thing. Uh, so you have to sort of use your cursor here, um, or you can just, tap across like that uh, so the only way so if i hit guide again you just get your mouse point to turn up which is, uh, which is not what you want the only way to escape it is to hold down the back button so let's go back to the guide here um, so let's just say you want to Serious link this a life in the sun hit it schedule recording uh, 
the whole series this episode only cancel so here's your storage device you can actually choose uh, which storage device you want there is some sort of partition thing on on that drive i will link below the drive that i use for this tv um yeah so it's, it's pretty good i was using a two terabyte drive in my uh, Samsung F7000 this one I'm using a one terabyte because I'm probably not going to use it that much anymore now hit cancel now the problem with this is that if you do series link something so let's go to I'm serious at the moment I'm series linking match of the day So here we have match of the day there now for some reason that's not that one's got red on it but this one hasn't so let's uh so this there's no indication this one's being recorded the whole series and if you see top right it says this series is already scheduled now the problem with this tv is with with recordings um so this one's so if I now go to Thursday, Thursday, takes some time to catch up, waiting, still waiting. So let's talk about the screen burning while I'm here. So for me, I don't really have the OLED light that bright. Um, so if you if you are using this in a well lit room, you know you've got the windows open all the time. There's loads of daylight. There's loads of sunlight. Then I would probably get an LED TV just to be sure that you're not going to get screen burning. If like me, you you got it in a bedroom. I mean, most of the time I there's not a great deal of light in this room. Uh, the window's not that big um if i watch usually when i watch tv i draw the draw the curtains a little bit so if you kind of don't like a bright room then yeah get it um i've not really noticed any um i don't know any issues with it really other than the ones that i've discussed before now there is a setting here which uh, stops Sometimes you can, it can lose recordings. So this is a setting which uh, you might want to have turned on. So I had Frasier recording, uh, series link, and I noticed it didn't wasn't recording. Um, and I've gone to turn the TV on and it says that it's lost its um, auto tuning thing. So there's no tuned programs or something. Uh, so I think that's maybe the the issue there. Program list update. If you turn off this feature, your programs will no longer be automatically updated when changes occur. So, um, if you want to keep everything the way it is and for your programs to record, I would suggest turning this off. Yes, the problem with that is when there's a there's a change in the EPG, you'll get a little um, safety message pop up saying um, the thing's changed. Do you want to auto tune? Um, so obviously that's a bit of a pain because now what you have to do is. Um, God, it's uh, you. You have to get go away. Is you have to turn off your favourites. Um, this one here. Um, oh, how annoying! So there's there's no uh, um, there's no EPG here, but there's. If we go we've got we've got the TV we've got the channels but no EPG for some reason so I guess we're available please check your antenna connection start auto tuning now so it wants me to auto tune again 
and you got this stupid cursor that pops up like a fucking Wii remote. Auto tuning, okay. If you want to do that again for this for the uh this is this will be like the third time this month that I've done this. Um what smart retuning? Reaching brands while retaining current program information. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds like that smart thing, like it might actually uh, have some intelligence about it. And it won't just randomly delete all your pre your TV guide, your recordings, your life. Destroying your life is what this TV is doing. So this TV guide, it should be eight days in advance. It's Saturday, so it should have Thursday on it, but it's not showing Thursday. Also, with this uh, Freeview Play thing, if you click that, catch up and on demand. Oh, it doesn't. It's working. Um, that's not really that useful, to be honest, because, like I said, in before, you can hot link this to your keypad. Um, if I hold down number seven, I go straight to iPlayer, so it's not that big a deal. And what you can do is, if you press the home button on your remote. You get the home web app thing going on. So as you can see there, I've got BBC Sport, iPlayer 4, Now TV. You know, I've got everything on there, so I don't really need to use the Freeview Play thing. Um, it's just another way of accessing it. What you can do with this as well, if you hold down that, you can actually move your apps around so you can reorganize them, which is uh, really exciting. So again, I, I click that done, it didn't register it, so this this pointer thing can be a bit annoying. So if you kind of like, you know, you're like, uh, it can not register, um, can we not knock it? So we're still on Wednesday here, so um, I'm going to turn the TV off and on again. So I'm going to turn it off like that. Hear a little click on the TV. Click it on again. There we go. It's coming on. Here we have a, a woman talking. So I'm going to hit the guide button again and uh, see if uh, anything happens. Hmm, interesting. So when you're watching TV as well, if you want to press the I button to get the time, you have to press the ho this home button here on the remote to get this thing pop up. You've got the time here. Um, so if you hit back again, it's gone, but you're left with this. So you now have to press the and a button on the, the jog wheel button to get rid of it. But then you get another overlay, start recording. See at the bottom left here. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a bit stupid really. Um, you know, why, so with this, going back to the Harmony remote, um, it actually has a info button on there, which you probably can't see. So if you hit that, you get info turn up, which is what you want. So to get information on this program, you hit the up button here. So I'll just press the up button on the remote. You have to select it and then you get the information there. You actually get the time top right. Um, so there we go. So if, I, if you hit left and right, you can go through what's on that channel. Uh, you can go through the other channels up and down. So that is relatively okay. Um, again, you're using this, you're having to use the middle okay button quite a lot. So that's free view. Um, so let's see if this if this does actually work. So to go to your current time, you press the blue button. 
that goes to today. So I'm now going to demonstrate um, an issue where if you series link something, um, you only get an indication that something is be going to be recorded on the next program, on the next recording. So let's hope this uh, picks up a little bit. Um, so we're waiting, we're still waiting. It's normally a little bit quicker than this. It's not usually as rubbish as this. Uh, hello. And the an, another issue with this guide is there's no time on it. The, it doesn't tell you the current time or date. Okay, so I'm now going to demonstrate um, the issue with serious linking on here. Once the EPG catches up, there we go. So let's serious link Emmerdale. Uh, let's let's do the one show. That's on every day, isn't it? So we'll we'll serious link the one show. Schedule recording the whole series. The recording has been scheduled, so there we go. So if you look now, there is a red indication that this is going to be recording. So we know that, that's great. So if, if we now go back, go forward 24 hours, it's quicker to hit the right button on the remote than go to the that, uh, the get your little pointer and go over to here. It's actually quicker, um, but we've gone down a page. So yeah, it's not exactly uh, quick. Waiting. Waiting. Almost there. Yeah, there we go. So there's no indication this is recording. So let's now, so you're like, oh, it's not recording. How do I know? There's no indication that it is recording. Uh, for some reason, this is really, um, it's not normally as sluggish as this. It's uh, schedule recording the whole series. This series is already scheduled. So it's already scheduled, but there's no indication that it's already scheduled. So if you're like, oh, I'm going to record Saving Lives at Sea. Well, there's nothing else to be recording, so I'm going to record it. So if we try to record that. The recording has been scheduled. So it's now it's, it's now not going to record one show. There's going to be a conflict. So it's like, it's just a bit rubbish the, the the recording with freeview play whether this is just specific to lg play um lg tvs i don't know certainly this will probably be in the 2018 uh, lg tvs as well the schedule manager thing um uh, it's one of these TV scheduler is that it is that another way of saying guide no this is something new so these are I think all my recordings so this is uh, this is old ones which um, I've no idea why that's still there um, so I guess that's just a error um, that might have been when it, it I had the setting where it auto tuned so that might be an issue where it's sort of it's just left it there unable to load so here we have our recording so BBC News match of the day FA Cup highlights yeah so that, that's that's not actually showing the match of, that's going to record match of the day it's, go, it's going to record FA Cup highlights after the match of the day but there's no indication that it's going to record uh, the actual full uh, shebang so you might want to go into here uh, see top right if I hit the red button it will edit this you can just change the storage device on that so there's there's no actual um, indication there's no way of editing the time on that so if we press the red button here no that's not it if we So if we hit the yellow button, so 
So you can manually set a recording. Set the storage device, yeah. Yep, that one. Yeah. Um, next. Uh, not recurring. So we can set it so that it's... Uh, um, whatever time match of the day is on. So you have to do this, you can't use the key numerical keypad. Ten o'clock, ten thirty, yeah, whatever. Um next. Uh God. Um Yeah. That's there. BBC one HD next. So that's confirming what you've done. Yeah, done. So that's now going to... There are two more... Uh, so yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very crude thing. Um, so as you can see here, we, we've got the one show scheduled to record. But... Um, if you come here, it's not on Tuesday. It's going to actually not record the one show. So there's going to be a conflict. So I'm, I'm not sure what happens when there is a conflict, whether it just tells you just before it records or something. With the Samsung uh, Smart TV, it would, when you hit, when you schedule a recording and it's already recording over something else, it will tell you there will be a clash. What do you want to do? Which one do you want? Where do you go? Do you want to record an alternative version of this? So, for example, um, if it's on channel four, it might say, do you want to rec re record an alternative version on channel four plus one? So it's a very crude recording system you've got here with the LG TV, more cruder than the Samsung F7000. Um, big reason of course is it's a single tuner what i would say as well is that if this tv breaks and i have to get a new one all your recordings will be lost because well pro probably lost because the usb hard drive is encrypted to only work with one tv at a time so my usb hard drive that's in the well the drive from my samsung f7000 which i was using if i plug this into the lg tv I'm not going to be able to watch any of my recordings. I'm going to have to format it and use it with this TV. So what I would say is maybe just get a um, a Freeview recorder box and just use that. Having said that, if like me, you only Sirius Link uh, match of the day. Um, I was Sirius Linking Frasier on uh, Channel Four. Um, SAS command so I had probably two or three serious links going at any one time um, if it's very occasional use of uh, live TV so one of the usage of what I do as well is for example an FA Cup match or a live match on terrestrial TV such as Wigan v Southampton what I might do is hit is record this. This episode only. Schedule that to record. Um, the kickoff's half one, so I might come in at two o'clock. And what you can then do is fast forward it. Now the problem, now let's go into our recording. So let's actually go into how it is to use um, the remote for recording so here is the recording section um, so it's all chucked in there so if you wanted to watch the next episode of Frasier for example seriously there's loads of them you have to go right to the bottom and then you select Frasier so to delete stuff you hit the green button top right you see the hot link um, and it's a little bit cumbersome here um, so let's, uh, let's select stuff to delete. SAS, who dares wins? I've watched all that. I don't want that. So you just select stuff you want to delete. Now to get back up to, the, you have to select delete there. So 
you have to go up like this or which takes ages or you can't you have to press right and then up and then delete and it's just a bit of a weird way of uh, you you know you have to find a shortcut for yourself So with a one terabyte hard drive, I've got, probably got about 750 hours of uh, freeview recording power at my fingertips. Another thing you can do is edit the title. So for example, it did an auto tune and it forgot all my recordings. So it missed a few uh, phrases. So I've edited this title so that when I get to here, I know that I need to watch series six, episode 21, 22, 23. And then this is the final episode of series six. Because the reason why I do that is if I press the yellow button and then you press the yellow button and then you've got to select the thing. So instead of having an I button, an info button, like on here, you press it and you're straight in. You've got to, you've got to file around with colored hotkeys and select, you've got to make three or four key presses, which is a bit annoying. So with this, the, the broadcaster has decided not to put the series number or episode number in the video, in the description. So you have to kind of Google it and see which episode you're up to. That's kind of a broadcaster issue. Um, so there we go. And if you want to find the info on this one, you hit the that one as well. So I hit back again. Um, yeah, so it's it's a bit sort of again it's a crude way of doing things, but it's at the end of the day it's it's still it's still all, all through the TV. You've not got an, an external box. It's probably a bit easier um, if it's all in one place. Sort and filter here, so you can record. You can set it by short recording, serious recordings. Um, Again, it's not very good this uh, this way of doing it. Serious recording, so as you can see, it's just a, it's just an absolute mess. I'm not really sure how if that if that will work. I think it's just easier just to go by, um, chuck it all in there, and um, one big disorganized pile, and just sort of go to the bottom. You know, I'm really only watching Frasier, serious linking Frasier, so it's not that big a deal. Yeah, so it, it's a crude way of doing things. Um, so one of the things I miss um, with the recordings on this TV, with my Samsung TV, if I was recording an FA Cup match, um, I could come into it 30 minutes into the game, go to my recording section and actually start the recording from the start so for example if i go into match of the day here so what you have at the bottom here is you have rewind play fast forward you can go times two times four times eight times 16 and that's it you can use this this uh, cursor thing here as well. So if you go here, you can actually select a touch. So if you know you're you you know you're a Southampton supporter, nil nil against Stoke, you're going to be sort of at the end here. And if you just want to watch that, then uh, you're kind of in the roughly the right place. Um, the annoying thing this is a gen this is an overall general thing with the TV is this the middle button does everything. So We've got a cursor there as well. So if you hit, you have to hit the OK button. You say you have to do two key presses, pauses it. And now to fast forward, what do you do? What you have to do is press either the button, the click wheel, uh, the uh, up, down, left, right button, or the middle button uh, cursor. And then you have to hit, press the right button and then fast forward. So that's uh, so how um, so that is one, two, three. So that's three key presses just to fast forward. Whereas with this remote, it's play, pause, fast forward, rewind. It's one press, simple. This is more 
annoying. And we again, we've got our cursor going as well. So you can, you know, it's just... Ugh. Also, with this, this has got a... So my Samsung TV had a plus 10 second button, whereas with this one, it's got a 15 second button, which is okay. I mean, 15 seconds is okay. What I use that for is when the ball goes out of play for a throw-in, if I hit the step forward button, they're throwing it again. So this is ideal uh, for like an international match where um, it's pretty boring. So let's go back to the TV. So I'm going to hit the number five button. That will take me to BBC News HD. Quick access five is the uh, term. So here we go. So if I hit the down button here, see the bottom left, start recording, press the OK button. There we go. It's a bit slow. Uh, with the Samsung F7000, you just to start live recording, you just hit the play button and it does it automatically. Um, with this, you've got to do 400 key press it record. Recording has started. So there we go. So this is this is uh, live uh, time shifting recording. This is now in time machine mode. So to pause this, what do you do? You got to hit the OK button there, and you got this. And your little cursor pops up. So let's try that again and hope that the uh, your cursor always pops up. That's really annoying. So the, to avoid your cursor showing, you press the down button here. Um, but see, it's, it defaults to stop recording. So you have to press one, two, three, four, five. It takes five key presses to pause it. Or let's try that again. Right. So let's press the down button. So that's one. And if you press left, you go to start live zoom. One, two, three, four. Still five key presses. Yeah, so that's a bit annoying. So, and to step forward, you can't actually do it in live mode. So I, I can't, um, let's just re rewind this. Uh, um, so now we've gone back like 40 seconds. So if I, so top left, you see it says recording. That's kind of useful. If I go to um, HDMI 1, see the top left, it should indicate that it's recording. Yeah, so that's good. That's a good thing. It's showing that it's recording um, Freeview. So if I now go back to BBC News HD, it's still recording. So it want what you can't do is step forward 15 seconds. So if I try pressing this button, you end up going to these uh, things that you never use, uh, like a shortcut to the, to the TV guide, which again is, is not the quickest. Back button. So you can't step forward. The only way to step forward is to, uh, no, is to um, manually do it like that. It doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't there. So if if I if I press the back button, doesn't work. Does nothing. Whereas if when you're in your recordings, you can do that. So that's annoying. There's no way of uh, stepping forward during a, a live match. So the only way is to fast forward it. You know, it's too many key presses. With this Harmony remote, um, I haven't actually set this up, but what you can do is, um, obviously you've got your play, pause, rewind, fast forward. So you can actually just press the fast forward button and it will do this thing called just fast forwarding. Whereas with this, you have to, so to fast forward, you press the down button and then one, two, three, four, five, click, six. What's that, six key presses? So there we go. That's kind of the uh, annoying factor with this TV, but overall, basically, really good image quality. Um, it's great for movies. Um, it's got its 
it's not the perfect TV, um, but I would say, yeah, get it. Um, I think it's uh, it's maybe at eighteen hundred. It's probably too much. Um, it's fifteen hundred is pff, still too much. Uh, around a grand, I think uh, I would say if it was a grand, I would say yeah, get it. It's worth it. But it's still, you know, a good TV, um, and I'm happy I've got it. I've got it also on a Sonus sound based bar thing at the bottom there. So the sound quality is really good on this with that. Um, it's very expensive. So yeah, um, that's uh, pretty much my sort of review of the LG C7 TV. Thanks for watching.